In this video, I would like to go over the difference between the presentation of the delirium and dementia and then go over the causes of different one of them. So with delirium, the onset is usually acute and these patients present with decreased attention and decreased consciousness and then there would be also hallucinations that are commonly present with the delirium and then the cause is re usually reversible and it can be caused by the infections the most common of which is urinary tract infection in elderly it can be caused by drug intoxication or by drug withdrawal it can be caused by trauma it can be caused by fever dehydration or medications like benzodiazepine administration in elderly so that's actually very important if there is an elderly that is being brought to the uh, psychiatric ward and the patient is agitated you cannot give them benzodiazepine because that would make them delirious so you can uh, calm down those patients by administrating the haloperidol patients with dementia however the onset is usually chronic so think of Alzheimer's. It's not like they develop dementia overnight. The onset is usually chronic. And then different causes of it includes the Alzheimer, multi-infarct dementia, Lewy body dementia, Pick's disease, and so on. So I will go over that next. And then the cause is usually not reversible. So if someone develops Alzheimer, for instance, you would not be able to reverse the uh, memory in those patients. However, the attention and consciousness is usually normal. So you can talk to an Alzheimer patient, they look okay, I mean like they may forget, but they would still be able to listen to you and understand what you're telling them. And then they can have presentation of the hallucinations, but hallucinations is usually less common than patients that are delirious. Now next I would like to go over the common causes of dementia. So the most common cause of dementia is the Alzheimer's disease and this is caused by either the intracellular accumulation of the amyloid beta plaques or by the accumulation of the extracellular neurofibrillary tangles that are made of a microtubule binding protein called TA. And then generally the diagnosis for Alzheimer's disease is clinical. Same with Parkinson. Parkinson and Alzheimer's the diagnosis is clinical. But then you can uh, strengthen the diagnosis by seeing the MRI of these patients. An MRI will generally show the cortical atrophy as well as the enlargement of the brain ventricles. Common risk factors to the development of the Alzheimer's disease include age, Down